Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about the Web3 Unity SDK. The Web3 Unity SDK brings the power of Morales to your Unity projects. Offer more features to your game players in less time with this sage advice. Morales includes complete learning resources. Learn about the Morales Web3 Unity SDK by clicking the link above. The Web3 Unity SDK examples project is a suite of standalone Unity scenes, each that cover popular topics for Morales and Web3. A smart contract is a program that runs on the blockchain. It runs when certain conditions are met. Your project calls functions on the smart contract to interact with the blockchain. And the smart contract communicates back to your project using the return values from those functions, as well as events. From a high level here, let's imagine we have Unity running with a user. We have hard hat where we are going to deploy the contract, and we have the smart contract itself. I'll step through these four. First, we deploy the contract from hard hat to the blockchain. Here, optionally, we can set ourselves in the contract as the author of that contract and control the permissions, giving us more abilities than the average user. Now, the average user inside Unity can interact with their game doing different user gestures, and some of those may call the contract with either the run contract function or the execute contract function. Here in number two, we see that the run contract function is able to do read-only operations on the blockchain, and you get a strongly typed value returned back. In number three, we see execute contract function. Here you're able to do read and write operations on the blockchain, and you get the transaction hash back from the contract. And finally, the contract itself is able to emit events if and when it wants to. Unity can subscribe to those in the event that they happen. Unity is able to capture and observe the return values. Here we see some example code for how Solidity could return a string value to Unity through a run contract function. Now here with execute contract function, notice that the Solidity is changing state. You're able to do that. Also notice that there's no return value here. Here the return value is always going to be the transaction hash. So how do we call for run contract function from the Unity side? Here we're gonna use Morales and call the appropriate method. You pass in the parameters that are relevant for your use case, and you get that return value back. And here's the C-sharp for execute contract function. We pass in the parameters that make sense for the situation, and here the return value coming back from Solidity will be that transaction hash. We'll take a look at an example scene that calls run contract function. You'll be able to download and check this out yourself, and you can move this code into your project if it makes sense for your needs. We'll also look at a demo of the execute contract function. So these operations, they may change the state of the contract, and that way they're more powerful. And the return value is always going to be the transaction hash. The user playing your game will need to be authenticated, as well as they'll need to sign. That means that anytime this operation happens, they will need to sign, either using MetaMask through their Chrome browser, or through their mobile phone, etc. We'll deploy a contract, and we'll run it on the Polygon blockchain. So what is Polygon? Polygon's a decentralized Ethereum scaling platform, and it's ideal for designing, developing, and launching your dApps. So why use Polygon? Well, blockchain transactions, those who, which we run through execute contract function, are going to cost native balance. So here, we're able to use a testnet, so it's essentially free for us during development, and then we're able to launch it to production, and our end user's cost will be cheap, given the way this platform works. So what's a Polygon faucet? Well, while we're on the testnet, these transactions are essentially free to us, but the transactions still require some currency. The faucet is a software that we go to and visit, and we're able to get MATIC tokens for free, so we use those in our development. The steps here are to get the MetaMask wallet, to add the Mumbai testnet, and get some MATIC tokens. Get the MetaMask wallet from metamask.io. Visit admin.morales.io. This is where you can add the Mumbai testnet. And finally, visit faucet.polygon.technology, and this is where you can add those MATIC tokens to your account. Now that we've learned about Polygon and funding our account, let's take a look at the contract workflow. We're going to write the contract, deploy the contract, 
and then call the contract. This is our solidity contract. Notice the set greeting and get greeting methods. Those will be important to us in the development on the Unity side. This is the config file. This is how Hardhat knows how to run and deploy your contract onto the blockchain. Notice that there's some values there that you'll need to fill out yourself before being able to continue development. And this is the deployment script. This is run each and every time you want to redeploy your contract, if you've made some edits or additions to the contract itself. Now, there's quite a bit of text here, but just notice that in there we're deploying the contract and then we're verifying that it's been deployed. And then on the Unity side, here's an example of how you may call, using C Sharp, the run contract function. And here's an example of using Morales to run the execute contract function. So that you can see my screen better, I'll lower the opacity. Here in the browser, for example, we could start at morales.io and dig into the documentation. The example project itself is downloadable here from the GitHub of Morales. Here's the Morales documentation for run contract function. Notice that it returns read-only data. And here's the Morales documentation for execute contract function. With this type of operation, you can read and write data. Let's start by learning how to write and deploy the contract. Now in Unity here, we see that from the downloaded repo, there's a smart contracts folder. This includes an instructions text, which we can follow along with all the steps I'm about to show. I'm gonna go through the steps quite briefly because we've covered this in previous videos, including the ones I've linked to earlier here. These instructions text are a great place to start if you have any questions. And also the final version of these files is included here in the smart contracts folder. So you can use that as inspiration. Here in that instructions text file that's included for you in the smart contracts folder, you can see that there's over 10 steps to follow. Now, for the purpose of this video, I've already done steps one through 10 which is about setting up the contract and deployment script and the config. Again, those files are included in the repo for you, so you can use those as inspiration. Next, I'll show going through the steps following that setup. So here, starting with number 11, we'll complete the process. So following those instructions, I've opened up Visual Studio Code, I've done those first steps, and here we are with the three final files that we'll need to move forward. That's the greeting contract itself, the deployment script, as well as the hard hat configs. Let's do a quick look over the greeter contract. We see the contract of greeter. We see some fields that are set up for the contract owner, as well as the greeting message text. The constructor is called here during deployment. The setter can be called from Unity. This one needs to be called with execute contract function because it changed state. And this is the getter function. This one can be called with execute contract function or run contract function. Now, notice that with execute contract function, we would get the return value as a transaction hash. That's less useful for us. So we would call it with run contract function so we can get that strongly typed value back. Also, run contract function costs no native balance. So it's better to call anyway in this situation. So following those instructions text, we'll call clean, we'll call compile, and we'll call deploy. Now the contract has been deployed. The deployment script itself passes out some very useful data here. We can select this chunk here, which is for the address and the ABI, and we'll bring that into Unity. Let's do that now. Here in Unity is a custom class called Greeter Contract Data. This is the place that holds everything Unity needs to know in order to call this with either execute contract function or run contract function. Now, each time we deploy the script, it's possible that the address changes and the ABI changes. So we always want to grab those two values and pass them in here. I'll select these existing ones and paste in the new values. Now, run contract function accepts the ABI in string format. So what we've just pasted in works perfectly. Currently with the API, the execute contract function requires an object-based approach. So manually, you need to look at the string and recreate these ABI as objects. I've done that manually here. Now let's run each of the examples. Back in Unity, let's start with the execute contract function demo. I can search for that in the project window and open up the scene. Let's run the scene. So this example scene, like every other one in the examples project, handles authentication for you. At the top UI, you can see my current address. If somehow I wasn't logged in, you'd see the authenticate button there, but I've already auth. Now I've got my phone ready because when I call an execute contract function, I'll need to sign that. 
So let's go ahead and call set greeting. I'm confirming the transaction with my mobile wallet. I'm using MetaMask and we can see the transaction was successful. Now let's run the example for run contract function. Now for run contract function, we neither need to sign nor have any native balance. I call run and we see the result there gets back, hello world 593. Let's look at the code for each of these two examples. Here's the execute contract function example scene. Here's the core portion of the code when we call the execute contract function. Here we pass in the parameters that make sense for us in the scene and we get back the result, which is the transaction hash. Here's the main code for the scene running run contract function. And here's the core part of the code where we're calling that run contract function. That's it. Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at morales.io slash projects. Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.